Uh, it's quite unfortunate that they're not good stuff. I'm sure there's good stuff out there. That's not what I'm reporting on. I report on shit. That's what I do. Somebody's got to do it. Because the news stations won't. <laughs> For example, oh well, I don't know what to report on this sort of stuff. If it's critical of the military, you can bet on it that they will not report on it. Ever. They were threatened by Donald Rumsfeld. I went through that in a different video. Anyways, <clears throat> excuse me. China and uh, China has warned the U.S. that if they try to interfere with them more or less reclaiming Taiwan, that they will act militarily, that they're putting down a stern warning that there will be there will be fire if we try to interfere. And <laughs> they're our ally. <laughs> So, you know, where we're, we well, always we said we'll, we'll come to Taiwan's defense. So when China goes back to reclaim Taiwan, what does America do? We have no business there. It's not our business. And we're doing plenty that we don't want to be intervened on. Not that one makes the other okay, but. So that's one thing that's going on. Um, let's see. Um, Britain has said that they may be um, assisting oil tankers through the Strait of Hormuz um, via fighter jets and um, warships, basically. That's a problem because Iran just said that they are going to heavily guard the Strait of Hormuz, their territory. So I don't think that that means that warships are welcome. Uh, so that is a huge flashpoint. So there is that. And also uh, Britain and uh, Iran, neither one of them have released each other's tankers. They're you know, holding each other hostage with that. <coughs> Excuse me. The China and Russia have uh, more or less proclaimed that they're united um, <laughs> in opposition to the United States. Um, when I say united, I don't mean just morally. They flew over uh, South Korea and Japan territory, united in a united mission, and South Korea fired 360 warning shots at them from a fighter jet. Uh, that's, you know, to me that's dangerously, dangerously close to uh, World War III. If, if it's not already, you know, starting. So, um, that's going to be a problem because the U.S. is not going to be too happy about the fact that they've said that they're going to continue doing these missions. Japan's furious. South Korea, like I said, shot 360 warning shots. They both say that they went through their airspace. It's very provocative what they did. Um, and I think that it was to send a message to the U.S. saying, um, <laughs> we're united. And you know, what, what is that message? We will, <laughs> we will go to World War III with you if you, if you uh, push. So, also there's um, Israel attacked um, Damascus um, in one of the biggest bombing campaigns that, that's happened for months. Um, but it's not just Iranian Iranian um, troops or whatever in in Syria. This time it involved um, Syrian troops and, and uh, six uh, civilians that died. And Syria's 
calling it an act of state ter terrorism, which it absolutely is because um, Israel has no right to go into Syria. It's a sovereign nation who has invited Iran in, so they have no right to attack Iran in Syria. Um, and both nations have done nothing aggressive toward Israel. So they're on the wrong side of history in Israel. Um, they're sparking, they're really trying to light the match that starts it all up. Israel is doing the whole um, <laughs> preemptive defense, which is offense in really shit language. <laughs> and it's offensive language, basically. Yeah. Um, what else is going on? So Israel also admitted to carrying out hundreds of attacks on Syria um, in the last few months. There's been no provocation. You know, they Scrappy Doo. Remember Scrappy Doo from the Scooby Doo cartoons? That's Israel. You know, it's, they have the United States there making sure that they can't do any wrong. No matter what they do, we block any sort of um, consequences. So they're like the let them let me add them Scrappy Doo. You know, saying you know being really just brazen because because we're there to defend them no matter what. That's how it feels. Because what they are doing strikes me as being almost immature, if you can call war acts immature. You know, I mean, it's very Netanyahu, you know, has his four-year-old kid draw a picture of a bomb and says, look, Iran's making a nuke. <laughs> I'm not being literal quite. That bomb looked like it was a cartoon. This wasn't recent. Anyway. Um, so that's happened. Then the other thing is North Korea launched two more missiles. Um, so they don't know exactly what kind, but everybody or evidence seems to indicate that they're very much similar to the short range uh, missiles that they tested last time. They tested two last time as well. Um, they shot them 23 minutes apart and I, you know, I wonder what their motive is. I wonder what they're trying to do. Um, are they doing it just because <laughs> we got other stuff going on? <laughs> you no, know? I mean, what's, what's, um, what's the motive there? I don't understand, but uh, in addition to that, <laughs> Iran also fired a, um, not just a regular missile, a, a um, I, don't want to, uh, it's, I don't want to call it an intercontinental ballistic missile, but a ballistic missile, but, but, you know, we're not talking about bottle rockets. They launched it within the country, though, from one place to another. I don't know what that's about, but my assumption is that they're just showing their teeth and it's like a warning back off because we, we have stuff. Um, saber rattling, but from their own territory. You know. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's really interesting when the US surrounds them and then they do something and they say, look, they're being aggressive. Yeah, it's like um, me going to someone's house, pounding on their door, waiting there, and when they like get their gun inside their house, I'm like, they're being aggressive when I'm, when I'm like coming at them in their home. It's like, um, that's probably a bad analogy, but you get the point. Um, so those are the main things going on. Um, Jeffrey Epstein, this is better news, <laughs> in my opinion. Jeffrey Epstein was found unconscious and injured on his uh, jail cell, in his jail cell. Um, with injuries to his face and neck, neck being the uh, main one. Well, they think he might have attempted suicide, but I don't see, I'm sorry about this, but I, don't, I haven't looked into it, but there are some reports that an ex-cop 
who murdered four people and buried them in his yard was put in the cell with him. Now, there is a lot of money and power that Epstein knows about and has no reason not to talk about. That money and power buys stuff like that, where you put somebody who is the scariest person on the planet in with them and say, take him out. And we'll have millions of dollars waiting for you, uh, you know, or your, your interests. Uh, I don't, you know, I want to say I don't think he's going to make it to trial. I really, really hope so, because I want to see these, uh, these fools unmasked. I want to see who it is, and I want them to be prosecuted, um, you know, and I don't want them to get away with all of this. Um, I don't really care about Jeffrey Epstein's well-being, except I hope that he's alive to make it to trial. So there's the good news. <laughs> yeah, shit news, shit news. I bear this burden because not enough people do, and this stuff, a lot of it is just not known. They don't report it properly on, um, you know, alphabet news stations. Um, so I have to do it, and I suck. I don't have any experience being on camera before this, and my intention is to inform and hopefully to inspire people to do the same. And not necessarily on video, but talk about this stuff. Make it okay to talk about Because we're not discussing it and we're not standing up to the people who are doing this. But it doesn't benefit us at all. It benefits them. They're wealthy. I mean, when I say wealthy, I'm not saying that. They have a nice house. I mean billions. And so any kind of conflict they can create for the United States, they can just fly a private jet over to Argentina and watch, the, watch America burn. They're not beholden to this country at all. They're not, they don't give a shit about you and I at all. So we really need to try and rein it in and stop this world war before it kicks off because this is awfully dangerous what's going on. Um, missiles are flying, warning shots are being shot. Countries are allying against the US. This is dark and we need to do everything we can to try to stop it because if we go to war with Russia, Iran, and China, what's gonna be left of the planet not a damn thing for anybody. I mean, they say that if even five nukes go off, there's gonna be a nuclear winter. You know, we're talking about, we're five to 10 nukes away from ending all life on the planet. And the United States has 7,200 of them. Um, Russia has 7,500 of them. If any kind of little hair of a tit for tat nuclear exchange happens, we're fucked. We're done. So it's worth fighting to stop it. We need to try and convince everybody to get on this page and demand that they back away from war. No more wars of aggression. No more wars of conquest. We need to fix this military industrial system. The military industrial complex that that our country is running on. It creates its own wars to sell its own weapons to and then we lobby Congress to make more wars, to sell more weapons. It, it's a, saying it's a vicious cycle is not the right word, but that's it's a self-perpetuating process and they are the ones controlling whether there's more war to pay them. You know, that's and who, who fights the wars? Not them. No. It's these kids who want to go to college, right? They want to go to college, so they join the military, and they believe the recruiter when they say, oh, you would never go to war, and you're going to be a jet pilot, you know, we don't want you on the front lines, even if we were at war. They, they lie to them, and they can. They do. They lie to them because they can, and they do. These are 17-year-old kids, you know? 
They don't know anything about the world yet. But they sure find out if they go over across seas and fight a war for some corporation and find that out that they're murdering whole families for a corporation. Do you think that increases the PTSD just a little bit? You know, our PTSD is worse than any other country in the world. I think it's because when we find out that this country isn't doing what it tells everybody it's doing and that they fought for it, they have a hard time looking in the mirror. And that's really, really tragic. It's really tragic. So we need to stop sending these kids to fight wars of aggression to save them and to save all of us. Because it's not just a no more war thing now, it's no world war. That cannot happen, period. That cannot happen. Because there's no question we're all done if we go to fight uh, China and Russia at the same time. Because it will be tit for tat. And our current administration are war hawks. And they're perfectly willing to blow the planet off. <laughs> blow the planet off the planet. They don't care. They don't care. I don't know if they don't believe that it's going to be that ugly. Or if they have like a religious thing that, you know, that they are going to heaven if they start Armageddon. I mean, the way that Israel is involved in all of this is so, I don't know, it doesn't all fit, you know? I mean, a lot of it's for religious reasons, but it's not because the neoconservatives could give a shit about uh, Judaism and most Jews are not okay with Zionism. Um, so who are these people? These are people who are controlling the world, they're doing their best to, and doing a damn good job at it. And they pretend to be Jews. Um, I know that most Jews want everybody to understand that that is not their interest. They're not doing that. It's like us in the United States. We're not pulling our government's strings anymore. It's out of our hands. But what we do have is we can create opinion if we talk to one another. And everybody knows that this is unacceptable. It has influence on what they decide to do. If everybody is, is against it, they can think twice at the very least. That's why with Iran, they're waiting for public perception to be against Iran, so when they attack, it's all good, and we're all in and waving the flags, you know? Um, which frightens me, because I think that they could do a really horrible thing and blame it um, on Iran just to get public support globally not just in the U.S., because the whole world is not only skeptical, but fed up. As well they should be. As well they should be. Oh, yeah, that's a whole... Anyway, help me... Help me spread the word that we need. Peace. I'm really spreading the word about spreading the word. Uh, you know, what are... The most powerful thing that we have is... Uh, unity, to be united in a, a point of view and making that point of view that is on up in opposition to war, making that well known that we're not going to consent. We're not going to consent to war, not with Iran, not with China and Russia. Um, I mean, that just blows my mind that that's where they're pushing. I know that the, the guys from the Project for the New American Century, PNAC, the guys, you know, John Bolton and, and uh, Cheney and all the, all the guys, the neocon guys, look up Wiki PNAC or PNAC, Project for the New American Century. They're all the neocons that planned all these wars. And if you really look into what they wrote, their end game is China. 
They want to take China out before it becomes the next world superpower. You know, I understand that that could be in the interest of America to stop that, but not at the expense of the whole world going up in flames. Not at the expense of being on the wrong side of history. Not at the expense of world war. And definitely not at the expense of nuclear war. Because then what have you fought for? You know, watch war games. <laughs> The only way to win is not to play the game. Take care.